Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. And I am back with another gardening project. So today, mom is on her way. I am currently on the porch waiting for her, but she's going to be helping me put in a drip system, irrigation system, so that all of my pots and ferns and my vegetable fruit garden um, all has automatic water. We're gonna set it up on a timer and I will not have to come out here and manually water all of these pots anymore. It will be much better for me. It will be much better for the pots. <laughs> Because look, I try and I'm an okay gardener, but I am not a great everyday remember to water your plants gardener. So this is the kit that I bought because I need, I'm starting from scratch with this. I don't have anything. So it is a vegetable garden drip kit and it has, I will put a picture of this up on the screen so you can read it. But essentially it has everything that I need to hook this half inch black poly tubing up to my faucet, including things like a backflow valve and a filter and a PSI regulator because you don't want it to burst through your pipes or to go back into your house. Um, and then it has the half inch poly tubing, quarter inch poly tubing, quarter inch poly tubing with drip holes. It has some on off switches and elbows and brackets and things that you need for different configurations. So for the most part, this had almost everything I needed. I got it at Lowe's Home Depot. I'll put a link below, but it was $63 for the whole kit, which was cheaper than if I bought all these things individually. I did still buy a few things individually that mom said I needed for my specific configuration. So I will try to show you the things I bought individually as well. Um, but as soon as she gets here, we are going to start hooking this up. Hopefully it will go quick and smoothly. And she has this set up throughout the whole garden, which is great. I just have soaker hoses. I would love, <coughs> oh goodness, excuse me. I would love to upgrade my entire garden to this kind of system eventually, maybe in the next couple years. But for now, I just can't afford it. So we're going to start with this and then at least we'll have all the pots and things on the porch and the vegetables set up, which is perfect. Um, if you caught my gardening plan video, I don't know what I'm calling it. I'm trying to put in some raised beds over across from my current stock tank vegetable slash fruit garden. And so this is also the start of that. I need to get water over there. And so the whole idea is if I take this from the faucet all the way over to the stuck tank garden, it will be a quick jaunt across the pallet pathway to the new raised bed garden. And then I will be able to just tap into this, extend the lines, easily put water through the entire vegetable gardens um, and cut flower gardens in the raised beds. And all of that will also be on um, drip on a timer. So, you know, we need some automation in our lives. So I guess we're just gonna hang out and wait for mom for a minute. Okay y'all, so mom is like 20 minutes late and we only have two hours, an hour and a half for this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started at least with the parts I know how to do. So I don't know how to set up the drip system, but I do know how to put my new timer on the house. So I have this timer right now that runs my soaker hoses for the right and the left beds. This is the hose for my new bed on the other side of the path. And then we are going to put the new drip line on the timer as well. So I could either buy a second two pronged timer or for $15 more, I could buy a four pronged timer that would do all four things. That will let me put this timer on the other um, hose in the back of the house for not this year, but maybe next year. So we're going to start by taking this off. Mm -hmm. 
this is off, but I'm gonna turn it off here as well. I'm just gonna turn them all off, just in case. do have the uh, support under here. This is very heavy. And now that I am adding a four pronged one instead of a two pronged one, that will be even heavier. So you definitely want support under the entire thing. Just hanging it all off this. Um, that's a lot of pressure on your faucet. It's not super great. You don't believe me. I don't know what to tell you because I learned that the hard way. <laughs> All right, so I have this one off. I did buy the same brand for Spicket One because this guy wasn't hard to learn how to use, but he wasn't easy. Let's see if we can muscle this off without using the pliers. <laughs> Okay, so we've got it open. We can turn the water on. You can hear the water. It is flowing. If I turn this hose on right here, I could, could hose it up. There we go. <laughs> Doing everything backwards. Okay, so it is on, water is on. So obviously I will have to set this timer, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now because that is not the point of this video. Um, point of this video is the drip. So once you've got your faucet situated, and if you're not insane, that might just look like this. You might be connecting your new drip system directly to the original faucet. Um, or you might just have a single two-piece splitter with drip on one side and a hose on another side. Um, it, it all depends on your individual situation. For me, I need at least two hoses and I need all of my garden beds to be on soaker hoses and I want my pots to be on drip. Um, and I don't have a huge garden. I have the space in front of my house and I have a new bed around the tree. Um, but you know, you don't want to put, my house is 70 feet long. You don't want to put a huge long, you know, five piece soaker hose system on one hose. You'll never get enough water pressure to the end to actually get water through the whole garden. And so we've got three on one, two on another, and two on this one. And they just go every 30 minutes throughout the morning, starting at seven, seven, seven thirty, eight. This one will probably go at eight thirty, and then everything will be watered. Um, you want to start with the hottest part of your yard earliest in the morning. So mom is on her way, but mom is mom and she is never on time anywhere. So I am going to open this bad boy up and get into it because we're burning daylight, y'all. We are almost at four o'clock and by five, we have to be done. Mom was supposed to be here at three. Ready? 
you know, she's great and she helps and she knows her stuff, but she's just mom. So, is what it is. I will see what the instructions look like in here. Hopefully I don't need to return this box because it is not coming apart pretty. There we go. So we've got our tubing and then inside the tubing we have all of our pieces. So this is the half inch poly tubing with the drip holes. You can see all the drip holes there. And let's see, is it every 12 inches? Okay, so you can also get this in um, every six inches if that's what you need. We have our directions handy dandy since mom's not here. And we have all of our supplies. We have the quarter inch black tubing. So like if you're going to a pot, you'll run this next to your house from your faucet. Then you'll put in a little brackety bracket and you'll run this up the side of your pot. And then you will either put an emitter or that um, line with the holes in your pot. So let's see what we got to gum off our faucet. There we go. So I'm going to begin by attaching the backflow prevention valve to any outdoor faucet and then the 25 PSI pressure regulator. More directions. All right, so let's do those two things. We're looking for things that screw together and I don't want to make a big mess, lose all these little tiny pieces. So I did I occasionally think ahead. I brought a bucket out here to uh, put things in as I'm using them. I'm opening them, I guess I mean. So let's see what we can find. Starting with the scissors. It'd be easier to connect it all and then just connect the top to the house. Okay, y'all, mom's here and she's starting to work on the window boxes. I will bring you over there and show you that in a minute, but we've got this put together. So right here at the top, this is the backflow valve. So this is what it looks like. Then we have, dun, dun, dun. Ooh, I tightened that a little too much. There we go. I'm gonna show them to you apart so that you know in the bag what they look like. This is the filter and this is the PSI adapter, so. Put them together with the back float at the top, PSI, and then the filter, right? Like this. Make sure they're all tight. Perfect. All right, so step four is to thread the half inch poly faucet hose fitting onto the side of the filter right here. So let's see, I'm guessing that is this. Yep, so I'm just looking at the pictures here and that is exactly what number four looks like. I'm just gonna put this on like this. It just looks a little wonky. You know how sometimes they don't go on quite straight. There we go. Still wonky. Maybe the threads are a little off. It's probably my brain. And we'll see when we start putting water through that if that's good or bad. 
And now step five, continue pulling the collar back. To expose the barb, which is this part here. See how that pulls back? Push and wiggle the half inch poly past the O-ring. Secure lock by hand tightening the collar back over the half inch poly tubing. So we will slide the poly tubing in here and then pull this back over it. Um, but mom is setting up the window boxes so we can put the poly on here. From here, this is gonna go down and then T left and right into the poly tubing. So I'm not 100% sure, we'll have to ask mom this might have to come out and then do something. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and put this right on here. Let's see how it fits. That's good. I'm gonna go get mom a coat hanger and then you okay? Did you hit your head? She hit her head. And then after I get her a coat hanger, we should be right here. We can do this T and then she'll show you how to keep going to the window boxes. Okay, so now we have the black poly tubing at the bottom here and it is running from the window boxes at the very end of the house. I wouldn't pull on that hard and it's going to run to the other side of the house, but we need to connect it to the water. T. So we're gonna use this T and mom's gonna cut it right there. And we'll put the T to either side and then up the middle to the water supply. Now you just wanna kind of push this in as good as you can. Kind of wanna wiggle it. Speak up mom. Kind of want to wiggle it so that it goes in as good as it can. I'm gonna take this off. Probably just wasn't gonna worry about it. Yeah, but it, it looks bad. I mean, it's so bright white. I mean, it sticks out like a sore thumb. But you just put all this on as tight as you can, and then this, these sides, they kind of go like that, and then you screw them on, and they make them basically they connect. Basically a crimp. Yeah, basically a crimp. That's a good word. Okay, that's about as much as I'm going to get it on there. Okay, I'm going to stick this behind here now since I can now. Okay, so now. So okay. now you need the 100 foot side? No, I need this first to get a piece off to hook it from here to here. Well, I'll get you that, and you walk them through it, and I'll go get the 100 foot side. Okay. Okay, let's 
So what we're going to do is we're going to basically put this one on here, kind of how we just did the other one. Kind of wiggle it in, wiggle it in, and then tighten it to crimp it. It's not easy to do. It's not hard, but it's not super easy. But that's good because then you know it's nice and tight on there. See, this is. Then what I'm going to do is just kind of where it's going to be and then connect this tube here, which is on the house, on the spigot, to the one I just added the T to, which is going to be on the ground. So I just have to basically kind of eyeball it and figure out where to cut it. Um, <laughs> it keeps uh, cinching. It keeps bending. It doesn't like me right now. automatically deciding where it wanted to be cut. <laughs> I am. All right, so we're going to put this one in. Same way. Did the others kind of wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it. So it's seated in there. And then tighten it up. I got it in there really well. There you go. As it does not want to turn. Need the pliers? No, I got it. I got it. All right, guys, the helicopters are overhead, so hopefully you can hear us. Right. She's doing the other side now. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to hook it all up so that it, it can be together. It's, it's not letting me. Hildy, stop that. Get out. There we go. Now it's working. Go all the way in. All right. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that works. All right. So now that we have our helicopter serenade, they've been practicing every single video lately. I can go get one later, but not right now. No, it was very hard. Move you guys a little closer and widen the angle.
to the studio. Sit on this side of your waist and I'll walk everything for sure with him. Oh good, the helicopter's leaving. Okay. Helicopter solo. The um put the thing over there. You have to hook it up there. You're gonna have to tell me more than the thing. The whole punchy thing. The whole punchy thing. Yeah, Alright, so good. this here comes in the kit. It is the whole punchy thing. Does this yellow thing do anything? I don't know what the yellow thing is. I don't know what that's for. If you know what this is for, let us know. But mom's gonna cut it. It's gonna be about just so that it goes straight down to the the new, tube. to the new tube. So when we plumbed, when we when we attach the window boxes to the house, um, if you want to watch that video, mom ran drip already through the hole, and we have up in the window boxes rings of the drip tube with the emitters every six or twelve inches. I'm not sure which size we used, but they are already plumbed for drip we just have to connect the water to them to turn them on so i am going to be doing an entire video that i started last year when we hooked the window boxes to the house on adding drip to your window boxes but uh this is just the entire how to put drip together okay. so so we have this uh Tubing. That's what a quarter inch, quarter inch poly tube. No emitters, just poly tube. Just poly. Yep. And then we have these little connectors. Now let me show them. And they just, you hook them to your tubing, kind of push it in. There, push it in. You to kind of wiggle them. Because they have a little barb on there so they don't come off. And you just. Push it on until it's at the bottom. And then you're gonna go down here where the tubing is. And mark where you want your hole. And you mark where you want your hole, exactly. You and just then, mark it with your finger. Yeah. And then you just take your little hole puncher. And on this one, I'm kind of punching them on the top since it's just going to run along the bottom of the house here. There's no reason to put them on the side or underneath. A lot of times if I have these in a garden, I'll put them on the sides. So mom, like I was telling you earlier, mom has a system like this with the half inch and the quarter inch and different types of emitters um, all throughout her garden. And that's how she waters all of her plants in her garden. No soaker hoses, just tubes. I'm not that cool yet. This is the first step of being cool. I need another Where are they? Connector. I believe they're right there on that step. Ah. Yeah. And you could paint this so it looks like your house. But, but they're really not that noticeable. No, and especially since this is the back of my garden, if you're standing here walking down the the dumb pea gravel path, which I hate, but I have no gutters, so without the rocks, the mulch just blows away every rainstorm, you can see it. But from the front of the garden, with all of the plants in the way, you really can't see any of this hose maintenance kind of stuff back here it's all kind of hidden by iris and glads and roses and laura pedlum so all right we're gonna keep going i'm gonna come in and get you a closer shot on this next one so you can really see how she does it Alright, so we're going to go ahead and connect this tubing to the half inch tubing down here. Let me just cut it to make it fit. 
thing. Oops, I dropped my little coupler. All right, there we go. Put this right on here. I'm gonna pop the hole right here. It's not hard, it's just a little tedious. And then we just pop it in there, and that's it. And then you just put the tubing where you want it. Okay, so we're on the front porch now. We've come up with the half inch or the quarter inch. And you can see, well, you really can't see it blends in really well, but all along here we've run it and then straight down into this fern. So show them right. what you're doing. I'm doing the tea. When you're done, there you go. Okay. So there's the tea. So that's gonna go up at the top by that nail. And then we'll put another piece of poly from the tee down into the fern and we'll put a little emitter into the fern. And then they'll all be on drip and I won't have to come out here and hand water them as often. I might still have to water them occasionally. Just measure down to that. And, and then cut the it. Part. I'm gonna have to go get some quarter inch poly. Yeah, we're yeah. So this is just all that was in that kit that I bought. So I'm gonna have to go buy another roll and they come in rolls of a hundred feet, mom they said. They come in smaller rolls, but I always get the hundred rolls. Cause you're gonna use it eventually. I have a hundred rolls for it. I bought one the other night. I know, wish you brought it. Okay, so this is the type of emitter that mom had me buy. You just stick it down as a stake and then you can twist this top of the knob to have more or less water. Each one came with a little connector that I dropped. I'll get it. So you use the connector to go from the tube. So I'm just opening it maybe. I said just a little bit for ferns. You don't need the connector? No, because this hooks to this. Remember that oh. was the extra one. Oh, but I forgot, I gotta put it on. Gotta wind it around. So mom always winds it around the chain. Is that just to look better or to be more stable or? Just to look better, but I can just look it. I'll make it look better. <laughs> I can't, I kind of already put it on there and now I gotta take it off. It's on that barb so it yeah. doesn't come off. Break it. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Did you just break it? Just break it. All right, got another one. Broke the first one. That is the problem is they they connect really well. So sometimes if you have to unconnect them, it just snaps. And then mom said you just want to check it, especially the first couple days, and see are they getting enough water. Are they getting too much water, not enough, and then twist or untwist those caps as needed. That's a whole other problem. Is it a wasp, like the bug or the nest? Go. I don't know. If, if there's no wasps in it, then it's there fine. There was a wasp on it and it flew, it fell off. Huh. Or it flew away. One of the two. As long as it's not angry and stinging us in our butts. Yeah. Mom's gotten stung. Mom's Mom has the tail of woe. <laughs> And 
now we're just gonna keep going into the corner and around. As far as the poly tubing we have will take us, we, we probably won't get too much further with this batch. So we have to go get some more. All right, y'all. So I went to the store last night after we ran out of the quarter inch poly tubing. I got, oh, there's a big sticker on it. So you can't really tell, but I got this whole box. It is a hundred feet. And then I got more elbows and tees and couplers and more spikes. So mom is going to come back and help me finish um because we are going to have to run some of this under the porch the plan is to run it under the porch and come up back behind my pots on this side and over there and then over to the stock tea garden and the strawberries and i'll show you all of that but it got so late last night we weren't able to finish and even if we had I mean, you saw us run out of the poly tubing that came in the kit. So we are going to try without mom to get some of this poly tubing up and finish the firms off. She showed us how to do that. So I, I feel like I can do it. Um, and then I'm at the very least going to try to branch off from the drip tube, the larger half inch tube down by the porch and do my pots on the landing and my sweet pea pots out in the pea gravel. I am not 100% sure how this is going to go, but you know, it's not rocket science. Surely I can handle a couple things by myself, right? Right, y'all? I might just stand on this chair for right here. Let's get all our things here. And we'll just see what we gotta do. Nope, that's a bad idea. Boy to put a tee on. We need some more come down from the tee. So let's cut that and then we'll be able to use this to go across, right? No. Face. That looks about right. Uh oh. Look, I did it. I did it, guys. Since this is brand new, it's definitely more squiggly than the other ones that we had straightened out. We might have even cut it a smidge too long. We'll try cutting this next one a little shorter, maybe. So here, instead of a T, I'm gonna put an elbow. We've been using these tees and now I'm going to put an elbow. 
so that we can cap this off instead of keep going. And I'm not just lazy, this is open because I had them all open for a day or two earlier this month and a bird made her nest in there. You've probably seen her around here because she is not super happy that I'm right outside her little babies, but when I'm working down in the garden, I can see her bringing them worms and you can hear them chirping. It's so cute. I've gone in there and looked at them a couple times, but hard to get good pictures. on and now half a turn come down all right and now it's capped off here with that elbow so the ferns are done let's go down back to the ground i think we're gonna start um, going from the house, the half inch poly, out to the sweet peas, and let's try to do that. Come on, stiff. Let's go. Okay, so we still got mom's stool out here. We're going to connect right here in the black half inch tube. And then we're going to follow this edging all the way out and around. We're going to bring some drip tube up and pop it into both of these pots so that our sweet pea babies can get water. Let's work on that. Okay, so you can see I clipped it in right here and then I started running it along this edging. And I did that so that I'm not stepping on it and I didn't have to trench and put in a PVC pipe to protect it. I'm not gonna trip over this edging, the edging will protect it. And where I could, I did cover it up as best I can. I need to put a couple more rocks there with the pea gravel. And so you really don't even notice it. Now this is where we stopped, I just put a T and I trenched it here just through the pea gravel. I, nobody walks back here but me and I walk here, not really here. Um, and so then I just brought it up and instead of those emitters, I used some of this brown um, drip tape, drip tube with the 12 inch holes. And I just made sure to cut it so that it goes around the outside of the pot and it has three emitters in the pot. Now my mom is going to be taking all these middle sweet peas over to her house. So I'm only going to be left with ones around the outside, which is why I decided I wanted drip tube around the outside of the pot and not just one emitter in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and I already trenched. I'm gonna trench this over, then run another two line and put one up in this pot and I will try to show you that so you can really see it. But I mean, once you start messing with it, it makes a lot of sense. It doesn't look nearly as intimidating as you think it's gonna be. So let's go ahead and do the other pot and then we will go work on the porch. Betty, your donuts out here. Okay y'all, so I thought I was gonna put an elbow in right here in the line and then come across. Biddy, come here. No, don't bark at people. Come on. Come here. Now. Whew. All right, y'all, my neighbors just got home. And then trench across and come up. But 
this is the end of the line. I don't need to continue. So I don't really need, I mean, that's what an elbow's for, but I don't really need to do that. I can just take this line and go straight in that pot. So I dig a trench this way for it. Grab some more landscape staples. I left the bag over there. Put one here. Betty, that's enough. They live there. You know them. Oh, when I measured it, it was enough. It'll be enough. Go ahead, get this out. And obviously you can undo these twist ties, but then they'll just come all apart. All right, so there's three. put this in with the T up so that we can lead into it with our black tubing. Oh, I hate this stuff. Almost, almost. Okay. Go ahead and put the black Tubing on. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There we go. Wiggle this in. hard to manipulate with the egg trellis in there. And now if I was redoing this at the beginning of the season, I would have run this tubing up through the bottom of the pot. Biddy, that's enough. Come here. There we go. Up through the bottom of the pot. It would have come out right here and you wouldn't have to see this down here at all. But I uh, didn't have all my ducks in a row. So when the sweet peas come out for real, then we will re-loop that and that'll be just fine. But for now, these two are done. Let's do the porch. Oh, let's see if I can get up. <laughs> it's a whole other problem, isn't it? Pants wiggle.
Plugs. You know they're out here, but still. Don't need to be playing around with them. There we go. That is pretty good. Alright, y'all. So now we're going to put drip to these one, two, three, four pots on my landing. You can see that I've just used this large crack right here to run the drip through. So it's going down under the landing. We put it all the way across and it is connected. I just popped it in with my little connector right here. And I did it right there so that I can tack it down with some landscape staples. My dogs do go under here, so I don't want it loose or like, you know, if you pull it tight, it wants to stretch to like this corner since it's coming up high. I also don't want them to, you know, clothesline, <laughs> rip into it, mess it up. Also, mom messed up my little light yesterday. It's supposed to be like this one. So it's okay. I just got to fix it, but there you go. So I'm going to put some staples in down there to just hold it down. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and connect this to all the pots. I am, I think, going to try to run since there's not a plant in this pot just yet. I am getting a candy crush hibiscus from a lady um, that's going to go in this pot. And I had a whole extra bag of soil when I did my strawberries. So I just popped in this pot because I knew I was going to need it in this pot sooner rather than later. But there's nothing else in it. So I'm going to try to uh, run the drip through here since I'm not disturbing anything. But then this little guy, I'm just going to pop over the top in there. And the same with these. They have my pretty spring arrangement. And uh, we might we might run drip through the bottom of those when we come back for summer flowers. But for now, just going in the tops. All right, y'all. I thought this pot was going to win the fight. I definitely recommend putting the drip in before <laughs> filling it with dirt. But, you know, hindsight's 2020. I wasn't planning this project when I filled it with dirt. I did add um, a little, oh, what do you call it? Like riser with wheels underneath. Because otherwise, when that drip tube came out the bottom, the pot sitting on it would crimp it and stop the water from going up. So this way... The drip tube can come out the bottom and connect and nothing is crimped. So we did come up. Dun, dun, dun. You can see right there. And we teed right here. This geranium. You can't really see it, but it's down in there. And then here is where the hibiscus will go. I did twist that top all the way shut. So no water is going to this right now. And then I did try to put that tube in the crack as much as possible. And then I zip tied it to the back of this black right here. So this little guy I did instead of half a twist, I did a full twist. He gets really hot because of the um, metal buckets. These are both plastic. These metal buckets, the water goes through them. You can see how dirty I am. So I came up right back here. You can see the T. And so I teed right in here and I put this first one, there you can see it, right as close to the middle of the pot as possible. And then I took the second one and I strung it all the way around. I didn't want to fight through this since those snapdragons are so dense. And I brought him right in here and into the middle of this one. So now they will both get really good water along with my little geranium. And when my hibiscus goes in, 
all four pots will be on water along with the sweet peas, all of this. So we did, of course, the ferns. We still need to go, I think we're gonna go right here. We're gonna go under the house. We're gonna put in another, <laughs> you can see my mess from this project. We're gonna try to find another big crack back here to feed a tube up so that we can run a drip to um, all of these other pots on the porch. So that's next, huh, bitty bitty? We're gonna, we're gonna get grandma's help for that, but I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick. We'll be back. Okay, so we went, I went under the house, I'm filthy now. And this is now going all the way down. So never again do I wanna go under that house. But, you know, is what it is. So let's go ahead and get this I know this hole is tight, but I'm just having flashes of the end of this falling down below the house and I have to go down there to get it. long because if I add any more pots here in the future I just want to be able to splice it add a tea and go straight up into the pot so let's get the wagon put back so that we can drip into this pot So I'm going to go around this with another bit of the drip tube with the emitters like I did the sweet pea pots. So let's go ahead and cut this right here. Just going to work it around the pot. Voila. Nice opening right here where we can put it. Wiggle, wiggle like you mean it. Pretty good. Now we're going to have to bring this up. Part it.
Looks good. Drip on the porch. Complete. Okay, so we are down at the base of the house. Mom is placing part of the half inch poly tubing together um, that was really kinked and not fixable. So she's just cutting it, putting a new one in. Um, and we are going to then attach the soft tank garden and the strawberry planters to drip. And that is the last thing for today, and then I will just give you an overview of how it all looks. Okay y'all, so we are back at our timer. All of the drip is set up. Now if you have a different timer, I broke my nail yesterday trying to put the drip in that one pot on the porch. Anyways, sorry, off track already. It's been five seconds. If you have a different timer, then obviously you will need different instructions. But just for the sake of this video, I am going to show you setting up the drip on my timer and then we are going to manually tell it to go so that we can test it. So essentially you are going to use this button right up here to cycle through all of these things. So right now it is set to auto. The little triangle is right there. <coughs> Excuse me. But if I hit this button, it turns the whole thing off. Hit it again. It sets the clock. So this is telling me that it is Friday at 105, which is accurate for me. Then it goes to the water day. So for this, you are going to set how many days a week you want each zone. So this is zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four to water. And you can see this button here cycles through your zone. So zone three, my leftmost flower bed um, is getting watered every day of the week all of them will be. But if I hit this, it shows me zone four, zone one, zone two. So zone two is the one we now need to set up. You can see none of those boxes are selected. So we're just going to go ahead and hit okay on Sunday, puts the box up. We're going to do that for every day of the week because we want all of these pots to be watered every day of the week. And my window boxes. There we go. So there's that. Now when we hit this top button again, it's going to cycle again over to start water. So this tells me what time do we want that water to start. So let's go back to zone one. I have set at seven. So that is my water for this, the new garden bed over on the tree. That spot gets the sunniest early in the morning. So it's set at seven, first thing in the morning. Then for zone three, which is the next water bed, the next garden bed directly next to the house with my rose and cone flowers next to the strawberries, 7.30. Zone four, which is the bed in front of the house that is a little more shaded at eight. So seven, 7.38, we are actually going to set all my pots since most of them are on the porch at 8.30. So let's go ahead back to zone two and we're just going to hold this until it gets to 8.30. Perfect. Now you can see AM if I keep going or, you know, go beyond midnight either way, it'll go 2 PM. 
Perfect. So then the last question is, how long do I want this bed to go for? So I want this specific bed to be watered. All my window boxes, um, my pots on the porch, my vegetables and my strawberries, 15 minutes. We will see if that's enough. We can always come change it up or down. It needs enough time to get through all of those things that we put on drip. And it's a pretty big area. So until the pressure evenly gets from all the way on the end to all the way on the other end, those things won't all be getting water. So you got to give it long enough that that's, that works. 15 minutes typically is long enough. Then we're going to move it one more time back to auto. So if we leave it right like this, it's going to tell me today it is that the next start time is Saturday morning. It'll start with zone one at 7 a.m. So then I know it's good to go but we're going to go ahead and manually turn the drip on so we can see if our drip works, if this leaks, if it's leaking through any of the other things we've done, if um, if something is clogged, you know, if we have any problems. So cross your fingers. Manually, we want zone two and we are going to set it for 15 minutes because it has not been watered today. So it needs to be, and we get Zone two for 15 minutes. We're going to hit OK. There you go. So it is going through the tubes. Let's walk all along and see how it goes. But so far, I don't see any immediate problems. Oh, I hear all the window boxes starting to go. Oh, this is so exciting. All right, let's go check everything. Okay, so I can hear that there's a problem behind me, but we're just gonna show you in these window boxes. Here's our drip tubes, and you can see this side looks perfect. You just wanna check at a couple points. Make sure it's dripping. Here's another one. Yep, that one's dripping. Make sure they're all in the pots where they're supposed to be. And we set up these drip tubes for the window boxes last year, so They've been out here a whole year already dripping. You just want to make sure that they're, you know, not clogged or anything. Yep, drip, drip, drip. And so unless something's messed up, they shouldn't be, you know, more than a drip. It's literally drip irrigation. That is the point. Now something down here you can see this very end window box. Something is wrong there. Let's go see. Oh yeah. Okay. And that is literally out of drip hole. So I'm not sure what's happening, but that's right where it's connected. So maybe that drip hole is just too close to the connector. I will probably just take it off and run a new line to this box and we will see if that helps. But in the meantime, let's show you the front of the house. So here's the front of the house. So here's where my hose is and it runs all the way along the house, watering all these window boxes. Then this is where we came out and we came up to the sweet peas. So let's check. Yep, that one's dripping. Watering those sweet peas, that's good. Let's check this one. Yep, that one is too. So both of the sweet peas are, are rocking out. Then we came up to the porch and there's a lot of water coming out over here. Let's check. We might just have these turned up way too high. Oh yeah, look how much water that is. So we're just gonna turn these bad boys down. I think that was more. There we go. Oh yeah. Turn this one down. 
Left is more. Left is more. Turn it down. Turn it to right. To the right. Don't hurt the plants while I'm doing it. There we go. It's okay. They'll be okay. They'll, they'll be fine. Now let's check the geranium. Oh yeah, he's getting too much too. To the right. This is riveting footage of my arm. There we go, that's better. Now, from here, we went along here, along the front of the house, there we go, and around the corner to the vegetable beds, but we also came up this pole and over to the ferns, and you can see, surprise, the two ferns that mom did are fine. The two ferns that I did are obviously way too high. <laughs> Let's turn those down. Okay, so the, you could see this one's already dripping less. This one's blowing now. I turn them now. We also did, we came up under the house, which you can see back here, and we went into these pots. So see, are these dripping? Yep, drip, drip, drip. So that pot is good. We came over here. And I'll tell you, are you good? You got too much water, baby. You got too much water. So I will show you what I think happened. Just a second. So in case you two are a drip newbie like me, here's one of the, the steaks we're using. And when you get them out of the package, this is exactly what they look like. And if you remember when mom put up the ferns, she said you wanna open them halfway. So I twisted it halfway and I thought that was great, but look how much that's actually open. So when you get these, they are all the way open. I'm trying to do it one-handed. Hey, Betty, good girl. She thinks I have a treat. So you need to close it all the way and then open it halfway. Otherwise, you've closed it halfway from being all the way open as opposed to open it halfway, which is why everything I did was getting so much more water than what mom did. So these are still getting quite a bit of water but I'm not sure if that, I think they were just already overwatered from the beginning. So we're just gonna leave those. We will come back out and check them again. We'll run the water again tomorrow and we'll check them then. This poor little verbena is gonna be like severely overwatered. Also, if you have any suggestions, I got this little plant stand and it's so cute here, but it gets, watered on so bad when it rains. So I can't put anything that I don't want to hold water. And uh, so it ends up just being a catch-all junk table. That's not great. Need water-free solutions. All right, let's go around the corner and check the last two things. So I also wanted to point out that the drip line here, while it's very hidden in that crack on the porch, it's very visible here. So mom thinks I should just staple it on the back of this bar. Probably will, we'll see. All right, so you can see drip line runs all this way. And then we have an elbow bracket here. And then this is where we went under the house to tie in the porch pots, right? here. I will put some footage on the screen. My brother and I were out here last year actually installing the pallet pathway and we looked over and my little cream doxy sugar was like digging us a hole trying to get out from under the house. She just could not stay in the backyard anymore. So she dug us this nice hole and I filled it in but we put the 
tube right under there. Woo! Guys, it's not a video if I don't fall over. So I just, I took some of the skirting off. I went under the house and mom put the tubing down and I pulled it. It was awful. I did not film it. It's really low right here. I thought I could crawl under. I had to get down on my stomach and belly crawl in. And I will tell you, I thought about filming it. As soon as I tried belly crawling in, my pants came off. Sorry if that's too much. But so I'm under the house with the bugs and the dirt with no pants. None of y'all needed to see that. All right. So obviously the strawberries is too high. This one, not as much. This one does have to go through more. We're going to turn it down just a click or two. And I mean, these are, are coming at the bottom and they can drip into this pea gravel as opposed to, you know, I don't want things dripping on my porch. They can drip into the pea gravel. Now I will say where there is water, there will be weeds. So I will probably come out and spray this pea gravel really good. But let's turn this bad boy down because he's up really high. This is a really good one for you to see. Okay, so. There we go. I'm going to twist it. Trying to get so the leaves aren't in the way. Until it's just a trickle. There we go. And honestly, like we had set this up with a goof plug on the end so that it won't come out. If this colander, the second one that I end up getting is directly underneath the first one, I might not even need drip to that one. This might just come straight through the first basket and into the second basket and be more than enough. And we have water. So everything is getting watered. We will see. We may end up needing to run, a, like I said earlier, an emitter directly into the middle of my watermelon and my cucumber. But they look like they're all, they're all dripping. So that was the goal. Now, I'm going to put out a video in the next couple weeks. I have big plans to put a shed in here and some raised garden beds and deal with all of this. So hopefully this will be going away soon, but check out that video. If you, I, I need your opinions, but you can see we've run the drip down here. I've just left the end. I think I'm going to run it all the way down to the end of this fence. I have all this good compost and dirt down here that we, we dumped from last year. I think I'm gonna spread that out and grow some of those sweet peas on this fence to help hide all of that mess. But overall, we are finished. So I do still need to take my ladder inside. Um, and I'll come out and check on these, but the strawberries are already happier. So I am glad we got the drip run to those. I am glad we got the drip run to the rest of the garden. We will see, we will see how it does over the next couple weeks. Um, but that is how you install a drip water system. Thank you mom for coming to show me how, cause I did not know, but I think I learned a lot. I did quite a bit. I did get really bad sunburn on my back doing these planters. So if you liked this video, leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I did want to show you, this is everything that I have left from the original kit. So I still have quite a bit of this left since I ended up buying um, these for most of my pots. But since this was a vegetable fed drip system, you know, this is better for that. These are better for pots and plants. But like I said, I'm putting in all raised beds, so this will still go to use. That's why I bought the kit. This is what's left of the little bits. Um, and obviously whatever you need will be different.
but two couplers, which is a little misleading because these all came with an extra coupler attached. So um, I used those or these would have been used. I did not use any of the on off switches because again, these have on off switches already attached and four goof plugs. So all in all, I think it was a great value for what I needed and it set me up really well for doing drip. Um, when I went back to the store and bought all of these and all of the tea couplers that I needed, bought 20 of these and 20 tea couplers, a, a tea for my big half inch tube. And, um, it was $70 and this kit was 60. So these things add up. Like if you have to buy them individually, kit was definitely worth it. Okay, so what I thought was an emitter spraying and leaking all over from this window box was actually a spot where my dogs chewed this emitter last season, I guess before mom put it in here. So you can see I just, I just cut it off. I could have reused this tea, but I'm not cool enough for that. So then I just cut it off, put a new tea and a new length of quarter inch poly with the 12 inch emitter holes all the way down. And now this will run perfectly.